I say even again, Lord, sprinkle every mind, every body, every ground, even this building, the, the parking lot, the car. Even the clothes that we're wearing. Thank you. 
Lord revealed to Thyatira as many as have not known the depths of Satan. And so you see this spirit manifesting in Thyatira, teaching them to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to fornicate. And we saw that in the wilderness, admitting those idols, those false gods. Again, you have idol, idol worship and then fornication. And you also, in Greek Romans 1, see the introduction of homosexuality around that demonic. Activity. We could find fornication and sexual, uh, sexual relations outside of the union of marriage. We talked about how common that is. And we saw how, in three different occasions, how it invaded the church. It invaded God's covenant people. And God judged it for it. He killed in one instance 3,000. He killed in another instance over 20,000 over this same sin. And we talked about the demonic activity that inches in when people begin to live a life of fornication. We talked about Mystery Babylon in the first message of the series, the mother of harlots. After she was destroyed, the Bible says she became the hold of every foul spirit. And I talked to you about how those spirits were always there. It's just like how uh, Legion entered into the pigs, but he said, suffer me not to leave out of the country. Do you think Legion left once the pigs were destroyed? No. <clears throat> because Legion had a work to do in that territory to try to convert people into its way of life, its principles. It's, it's again, principalities reveal principles. And Mr. Babylon has a spirit behind it. <clears throat> and it became the, the whole of every foul spirit, the scripture says, when the fire was destroyed her and came upon her and killed many of the inhabitants of the Chicago Park. Uh, she became at that time a widow. She experienced death. But again, why did God allow that to happen and give that to us a couple of weeks ago? Is he wanted us to see the demonic activity behind our borders. Because she's going to spread fornication throughout the entire of the world. So there is a movement to the world where fornication is going to be rapid, but right now we're talking about the church. And so here we are this week, and I want you to turn your Bibles, and this is going to be where we open at, in uh, Isaiah chapter 4, Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that God admonishes us to minister to him without distraction. And how a married person tends to the things of the world, how they may please their spouse. But if you're unmarried, you don't have that distraction of having to please or minister to a spouse, you can minister to the Lord. You can more freely, more readily give yourself to the Lord. Here we are. Um, but there is something else that God is, was sharing with me in prayer this week. And that is how people at times cannot see past their marriages and their relationships. And that's, when I say relationships, I mean those who may not be married. Dating somebody. And there is this, uh, this issue where these relationships seem to consume people's lives. I mean, consume the lives all together. Where every, I mean, 90% of your time and day is, is this relationship. And God don't like that. He's, uh, he's, he's, God is trying to compete with that. Is what I feel in the realm of the spirit. It's like God is like, here I am, here I am, hear me, see me. And all we see is this figure of a being that we want to give our emotions and our love and our attention and we want their affection and we care about how they feel and we want them to be comfortable and we want to make sure that they have everything that they need, but we don't give God nowhere that nowhere near that much attention. Or that much space in our thoughts and in our minds. 
And we have to be careful about these relationships because they can consume us. They can consume us. And, and, and not only that, but if you're not careful, you, put, you yoke yourself up with the wrong person. Scripture says if you join yourself with a harlot, you become a harlot. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Who joins himself with a harlot is one spirit. You, go, you become one with that harlot. Even as we join ourselves with the Lord with one spirit. If you join yourself with a harlot, you become one with that harlot. And so we have to be careful in who we join ourselves to. God warn them. In the Old Testament, watch out who you marry. They'll cause you to worship their gods. People will introduce them to you all kinds of demonic practices. It's that relationships that bring the temptation of fornication. You hear what I'm saying? They're going out on those dates, staying out late at night. They're pressing you to take that relationship to the quote unquote next level. But nobody's talking about a ring, nobody's talking about marriage. Nobody's talking about did God send you to me or am I, if you're the woman, am I to be a help to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? An aid to you? Are you hearing what I'm saying? That conversation needs to come on the forefront. And we need to not be afraid to bring that conversation to the forefront. If you are a man and a woman is pressing, you bring the conversation up. And if you're a woman and the man is pressing you, bring the conversation up. And see where this conversation goes. See where this relationship goes. Guess what? You'll weed out a lot of people when you start talking on that level. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'll never forget when I was right around the time when Dr. Hunter came into my life, very young teenage. I had three women that I said, Lord, it's time for me to settle down. What's up? I need a wife. And because uh, it's better to marry than to burn, right? Amen. If you can't contain yourself, right? But I, I didn't just go jump and marry anybody. I asked God to send me a spouse. That was a real conversation I had with God and a request. Send me my wife. And so uh, around the time when I was getting ready to, uh, in that search for that one, Dr. Hunter was on the scene and then there was two other girls. And I asked them and I was talking on the phone with all three of them and Hanging out, trying to see which one is going to be. Right? 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 So I asked one, I was like, are you ready for marriage? I thought, I thought throwing the marriage question out. And one of them was like, no, indeed, I ain't ready for no marriage. It's going to be years before I get married. But she wasn't the one. So I got with another one. I went to the second time and said, okay, are you ready for marriage? And she was like, you ain't ready for marriage, huh? You, you still want to date this girl and that girl. You a play. You ain't ready for no marriage. She brushed me off because she didn't think I was ready. And of course, when I came to this woman, she was full ready for long commitment. And being with just one person, and the idea and the concept of marriage was not foreign to her. Because she had even herself told the Lord she wanted to be married young. And we've been together ever since. You hear what I'm saying? Whoever you dating has to consent to it. Yeah, I know that do not seem like a major point, but guess what? It is a major point. Because everybody is not ready to consent. Everybody is not ready to marry you. Everybody is not ready to leave all the other friends they have just for you, just to deal with your craziness, your jealousy, just to deal with the fact that you don't want them going out the house past a certain time. Amen, you hear what I'm saying? I can't go to Planet Fitness at 12 o'clock at night just because I feel like it unless my wife is with me. I will get frustrated if I call myself walking out of the door. In fact, she won't let me leave. It'll turn into a big fight. I have to please my wife, according to the scripture. And if I bring her to a place of being emotionally distraught because I walk out of the door, which is not wise, at 12 o'clock at night by myself to go to the gym with my gym clothes on and whoever else is in the gym with their gym clothes on and your wife is at the house at midnight, you give a place to the devil. It's just as simple as that. Those of you that want to go out and I just want me some me time, you 
better watch that spirit, that me time spirit. Why are you going out? Make sure you ain't going around some places where you're seeking subtly some attention. Or you want to catch somebody's eyes. You hear what I'm saying? If that's you, you might not be ready for marriage. You might not be ready to date. If that's you. Because if you date somebody, they're going to expect you to only be with them. Why are you looking for somebody else's attention? You ain't ready for marriage. You ready to take care of a house. You ready to clean the house. You ready to prepare a meal every day. You ready to minister to somebody when you dog tired and they're ready to be ministered to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you ready for that? Because when people come into your life, they're going to have demands. They're going to have certain things that they're going to want out of you. It's going to add to you. All, every other thing you got to do. You ready for that? Oh my God, not, that. not only that, but you got to leave everybody else that come your way. <laughs> Steve, you can't touch him if you're a woman and you married. I don't care how strong and fine his arms are, his, his legs, or how he look when he when you walk around in that tank top. You can't give Steve your time no more, your attention. And you better not go walking something in front of Steve with your tights on. <laughs> Oh, I know I'm in the house today. I feel it in the spirit realm. Right? But there are people who are dating and yet showing their body to everybody else. You're not even ready to date. You really think you're ready to be with one person. And you still have to subtly seducing everybody else. Strange woman, don't, she don't just seduce you with the eyes and the flattery of the lips. But also a beauty. It's a seductive mechanism. You have to be careful of that. I want to give you the prayers. Like the married woman is supposed to be shamefaced. She don't want to be seen. You know what shamefaced means? I don't want all this attention. I don't want all this attention. Holy women are shamefaced. Their husband to see how fine he is, but everybody else don't really see how fine he is. I ain't telling you to look like a, a, a mop. <laughs> Your husband don't want to be out in the public with you and you looking like, like a dust mop. You need to look good for him. I say this with my wife sometimes. Sometimes the king just want to bring Vashti out and show off. King of Persia. Bring back down so I can show off. Sometimes I want to show my wife off. Put some fine dress on. Get that hat done right. You hear what I'm saying? That blush and lipstick on. And that line of lips. Perfectly. And come on out. Come on out. Come to my job and bring me lunch or something.
they want to see. That's right. Amen. Let me get into this word. I Nobody else really knew what was going on in there, and he formed you. 
Then we come out into the earth and we give all our time and attention to somebody else. We think about them all day. We plan extravagant events for them all day. When it's time to give him and present to him a gift, we think, well, I gave him his 10% and he has 50 cent over. Relationships. When you gonna give God a full day? We give a full day to do every day. When you gonna give Him some extravagant gift? Even if you don't want to bring it to the church, give it to the homeless or something. Give Him an extravagant gift.
the disgrace, the reproach of being alone, I will share you with seven other women, six other women. And you don't got to do nothing with me. Just call me by your name. This is how empty this feeling is. It drives me. Yeah. It drives me. Well, if I'm, if I'm not with somebody, people begin to make all kind of irrational decisions because of women willing to share a man. Man don't have to do anything for you. Just call me by your name. Take away our reproach from us. Go to the previous chapter. God tried to press past all of these relationships just to get to his people. It's like a fight where he had to. Claw his way through and compete for your time and attention. And think about it, what I'm saying, what's time do you give God in prayer? What special extravagant gift have you presented to him? Have you planned a whole day for you and God? Context in these doors. Isaiah 3, previous chapter, they're called, the, of course, the daughters of Zion. Supposed to be the daughters of Jerusalem. These the women who are supposed to walk with God, know the Lord. But they, when God looked at them, he saw haughtiness. I'm going somewhere with this. He saw some haughtiness. Synonyms for haughtiness is proud, arrogant, conceited, self important, or stuck up. When we want something so bad, sometimes when God gives it to us, we can become this way. Yeah. Remember, I told you in chapter 4, verse 1, he stripped away the man. He stripped away the beauty. But we see what they look like before he stripped it away. Before he stripped it away, they were harder. And again, it's not synonyms to Haughtiness is proud, arrogant, conceited, self important, and stuck up. In other words, <clears throat> I have this man, I look good, I'm all that. But when he took it all away, the man and the good looks, they were willing to share a, a man with six of the women. Yeah. And called it shameful and disgraceful. When they were simply just alone. They want to be alone. Was willing to get with a man and say, you don't even have to take care of me. Just call me by your name. But before this, when they had it all, the man, the clothing, the good looks, <coughs> sexy outfits, red bottom shoes, like my wife said. And God hates that look. When we think we all that. Because 
we got this man here. We got these looks. This is what God will do about it. He'll strip you of those things. I mean, you know, one of the curses of the law says you control yourself to somebody and another, another man alive with. Control yourself to a woman and another man allowed with her. And this is one of my curses for turning against me. In other words, God said, I'll take a relationship from you. God has a way of getting our attention. That one that you want to plan a whole day for and spend two checks, two whole checks, to buy them something special. want to disobey me, I'll just take them from you. Leave your world upside down. Take them, cheat on you. And walk away from you to get your attention. See, we can't have men and women too big in our eyes before God. Set this up to lose it. God dislikes Audience. Sometimes when, when we need those things like that and God give them to us, and we see the need once it's stripped away. When we had it, we can enter into a place of a state of arrogance. When you want it that bad, they can draw you into things that's unbelievable. Put up or I'm leaving. My attention, my time, my looks, and my affection is going to somebody else. Put up or I'm leaving. That's how they pull them in. They still do that to this day. Put up or I'm leaving. And guess what the woman do? 90% of them, I'm just going to say men, they can put that, go figure out that they give in. And they enter into that fornication. Because Underneath all of that is, I don't want to be alone. Call me by your name. It's shameful for me to be by myself. It's a disgrace. That's what you want, okay. That's what you want. Get ready. 
Amen. Uh, Never gave you a promise that they was going to be with you for the rest of your life. Yeah. But they're talking about these other little trinkets you've given. Yeah. And they are trinkets. Yeah. Most of them ain't paying your rent, your light bill, your insurance bill, your car note, and all that other stuff. And that's why they're giving you trinkets. They're not even taking care of you, but they're saying, you better give me your body.
walked with their, they were haughty, but they walked around with their stretched forth necks. Their wanton eyes is, is blinking and oogling with their eyes. What's wrong with your eyes? says in Proverbs 21 and 3, 
to do justice is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. I'd rather you do the right thing than bring down these gifts. And look at what he goes on to say. A high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked seed. A high look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked seed. If you got an arrogant look and you arrogant in your heart, even if you just plow, it's sin. Just the state of being like that. Whatever you put your hands to before God is just sin. Proud look, proud heart, high look, plow. When I was meditating on this verse, I was like, Lord, if they plow this sin, just because they arrogant, just because they, they proud in their heart and they look, they look, they look, they look proud. And their heart is they high as look, they look, and their heart is proud. I said, Lord, even when they plow, it's sin. The Lord spoke this verse to me. He said, What did I say in Isaiah 1? It's Isaiah 1. And uh, Isaiah 1 and 10. I'm going to stop it. What did he say? In Isaiah 1. says in verse 24, instead, he says, it should come to pass instead of a sweet smell, there should be a stink. You ain't gonna smell sweet, I'm gonna make you stink. You think you're all that with these men and your beauty. I put a little odor on you. That's in your Bible. Yeah, pull the verse out. See, we don't want to get into no heart in this. It's Isaiah 3 and 24. It should come to pass instead of a sweet smell, there should be a stink. It's 
instead of a girdle. Instead of a girdle, a rent, I'll tell you clothes. Instead of a well set of hair, I give you some bombs. I give you some bombs. Instead of a stone marker, a stone marker, or a girding of a sackcloth, in other words, to change the bondage, I'll cause you to be sad and sorrowful. And then he says, instead of a, and instead, of, and beauty, and burning instead of beauty. All right, you have beauty, let me let you burn a little bit. That's what that means he'll wound you. You can 
go all over the galaxy that you want to go. You create the sun, moon, and stars, and you choose to take time to go walk in Seattle and call him by name. You know what I'm saying? That is how he cares for you. And he will remove distractions. Because he will not share your affection with anybody else. And he will take haughtiness away from you if you allow those things to make you all that. As I said to you before, it can be a source of haughtiness. You got, you got a man, but now you, you still want everybody else's attention. Change that with a woman, a man. A man, you'll have a beautiful, faithful woman, and still feel like you need every other woman's attention. Uh, yep. Ain't satisfied with just this one loving you. Let's just pray. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. Lord, you want to press past all of this haughtiness and these relationships and these thoughts of things and this need to please whoever this significant other is, but you're trying to reach out to us to show us yourself. You show us in the word today how you're willing to strip us to get our attention. <laughs> you know, I, I, I just listening to this word, I, I take it as a warning. That's, God didn't pick these, these verses for no reason. Maybe he's looked at some hearts and he's seen, like, okay, on, I see what you're doing for such and such, but what you're doing for me? On, when it comes down to prayer, you're too sleepy, you're too tired. You got other things to do. You'd rather go work out. You'd rather go to some job. You'd rather go do something other than come be before him. And again, I say this, you can't let substitute service is substitute for ministering to him. Martha wanted to serve tables, Mary sat at his feet. Yeah, yeah. God is looking for people that's going to sit at his feet. Amen. He wants us to love him like we love all of these significant others.
sitting here telling you that you go home from here and say, I'm going to give God time, and that means you put on the TV preacher and sit there and listen. You go be with the presence. Learn how to hear from the presence. Bring your Bible to your concordance in the presence. And God makes you the presence of God himself. feel the need to repent before the Lord for this or any other reason I want to give you a chance to just see you right now to tell God that you're sorry if you feel the need to say do it if anything has been a distraction it's been taking you away from him married and unmarried married and those who are unmarried and dating whatever it is Saw what he did to the daughter of society. And guess what? If you do that, you do that for your own my good. Because we can be too emotionally invested in these things to where we will compromise our integrity to keep it. It's too, it's too, you, you too, you're too caught up. You're too caught up. You need to be able to walk away from that thing in five seconds if you discern it ain't right. And have enough self esteem and self worth to know that God will either see you somebody else or you're going to be all right by yourself. Period. Yeah. Yeah. They ain't going to let you take me to hell. Because that's what they're going to do. Let's pray. Now you can repeat after me. Whether you repented of that or any other deed, it's just be washed by the blood. And again, be sure if you right now feel it. Convicted that you tell God sorry. Reflect on whether or not you spend time with Him. You've given Him your time and attention. You can't give even too much time and attention to your jobs. for tuning in to the television broadcast of Bethel Christian Church with pastors Donald and Dana Hunter. We hope this broadcast was a blessing to you and invite you to join us for the live worship experience at 1906 Beaumont Drive, Baton Rouge, Louisiana 70806 at 10 a.m. for Sunday services or online at www.bethelbr.net.